Hi, I'm Ben Garcia, I'm the broker of List Realty, and today we're gonna to go over the rental application and how to explain the difference between an application that we do for the landlord and an application an association might be requiring. Two completely different things. Have the same name, complete polar opposites. So we're gonna start off um, by having the tenant go to our homepage and go to the rental application. Um, we do have an issue where it's not really working on Safari. So if there's somebody that says they can't get the application done, have them do it on their browser uh, other than Safari. Okay, they might uh, have an iPhone and that's all they have. Tell them to get onto a laptop and, and, and do it on Chrome or, or Mozilla or something else. So anyway, everybody um, needs to fill out an application when they are uh, ready to enter into a contract to lease. The purpose of the application is so that the landlord knows the difference between your client and any other client they might be getting offers from. So our um, applications are very simple. Uh, they're only $48, no one's getting rich off them. And um, we need that in order to pull credit and background. We also need driver's license, last couple months of bank statements, and last couple months, maybe four at least, pay stubs. Uh, with that, we can put together a really nice package along with a contract to lease and send it to the landlord. This application will have previous landlord information um, and uh, other information that if a landlord wants to do a little extra digging, um, they might look at, uh, do you currently own a home? What's the status? Uh, you know, just a world of information that, that they can pull in addition to what we're sending them once they have this application. So they can clearly see um, they're going to put your uh, realtor's name on it and, um, you know, date of birth, uh, applicant's name, uh, social security, driver's license, etc. How long have they been with their employer so we can verify uh, that they do have a job, um, you know, other employers, uh, positions, income, child support, etc. Have they ever been evicted, uh, arrested? Um, and uh, once they fill out this application, we'll go ahead and pull the credit and the background and again, put a nice package together and, um, and send it out. So that's what we do as far as an application prior to a contract to lease. So now let's use the example that the, um, that the owner has decided to go with another uh, client. So you can take that same information, that same package, and you can make five, 10 different offers on different places without having to do a new application. You also understand completely now what is real compared to what you've been told. You might have been told that they have 700 credit. When you pull it, it's 640. It happens, you know, absolutely happens sometimes. Um, some people tell you they got 600 when they really got 500. Uh, other people will tell you they don't know their credit. Well, we need to understand that because landlords need that information. So this is what we do. Um, and uh, we hand everything in to, to the owner. So um, let's say that there's an association and the owner did accept uh, our client. And now it's time to fill out the association's uh, packet. So they'll have an entire packet. Um, just backtracking a little bit, after the, someone gets accepted and the contract at lease is signed, we get a deposit uh, into the holding company, an attorney's title company that we use, and then um, that shows good faith, and then the uh, listing side, uh, the landlord side, will create a lease for us. And once we sign that lease, we're gonna need that when it comes time to apply to the association. So now it's time to apply to the association. They're gonna have a packet. Who knows what's included in it? Uh, some are lengthy, some are short. Some have credit requirements, some don't. Some might pull credit their own way. But um, 
that association packet uh, will be need to be completed. Uh, normally they have a fee of about $100 per person or $100 per married couple. So they'll take that information, they'll do any additional screening they might be required. They'll review the lease. Uh, they may have a deposit uh, to the association for common area um, you know, damage. So we'll be looking out for that too. Um, and then when it comes time uh, to actually you know, go through an approval process, um, if the client is approved, uh, basically what will happen is the association will get all the paperwork, they'll review it with the board members, uh, they have to take three board members that don't get paid, basically they're all volunteers, um, they will review it uh, after it's come back, usually from a screening company, usually a third party screening company. And then they need to set up an orientation uh, with the client. Um, they'll meet and go over the rules and regulations. They'll hand uh, over any uh, you know common area keys, uh, you know car registration decals, etc., things of that nature. So they do something completely different, although it's called an application other than what we do. So now let's say for some reason the client gets denied from that association for whatever reason, something came up, something we missed, some, the, the change criteria, maybe they changed their uh, credit limits or, or something along those lines, you can go back to the client, continue to search, not have to do any new application for them and uh, you know make another offer on another property and you know what you're dealing with now you might call in advance to the next association and say look my client has 640 credit do you have a credit criteria uh, minimum and you know do those types of things in advance because you have all the information you need whenever you're not doing our application um, let's say you're doing an, uh, somebody uh, on the other side says no you have to do our application you always do list realties application first because if you go and and you, let's say you're making an offer on a property but the other realtor says no you have to do my application well when you do their application and you get denied you're not going to have any information as to why they denied you and you're going to go back to step one and your client's going to go wait a minute i just paid an application over there you're going to be in the same place you started you have no idea what's going on you have no information on them and now you're going to go to the next place and the next place either they're going to have their own application right and you're going to have to do it again and not know or you're going to do our application and you're going to know what you're doing either way now you've truly hit them twice so what I do whenever there's an application, let's say the listing agent says there's an application, you always do our application first and then you submit it to the tenant and you, I'm sorry, to the landlord side and you ask them based on what you see, will the landlord qualify our client if we go and do your application and the information that comes up is similar in those types of cases we'll go ahead and do that if they say no we can't even look at your stuff unless you do ours then they may be a professional application takers because there are people out there and you have to be very careful where the properties are uh, very low priced and they have you know 10 people a week applying nobody gets approved and they're making a hundred dollars per person they're making a thousand two thousand dollars a week just taking applications they wait a month and then they go and rent the place so you, you really have to be careful about that the safest way is to do our applications forty eight dollars and you'll have all of the information needed and lastly um, when you do have this information you want to speak to the tenants and let them know that we are going to be doing work and rental verifications is it okay some uh, tenants have not spoken to their landlord so you want to be very careful prior to uh, calling a landlord that you have their uh, 
you know, blessing on, on actually making that call. Now, this is an opportunity for you to pick up a listing because you know there's going to be a vacancy coming up soon because you're working with that tenant. So it's a good opportunity to call the landlord and say, uh, you know, go through the regular screening questions. You know, I've got Mrs. Smith. She's uh, going to be leaving there, uh, you know, January 31st. We're helping her find a new place. Um, I'm doing a rental uh, background check. I'd like to know, did she pay on time? Uh, you know, has she been a good neighbor? Uh, did she keep the place, uh, you know, clean? Was there ever any problems? And then, um, you know, when you're finished with the questions, you can let them know um, about our services and let them know that, you know, we understand that there's a vacancy coming up and um, we already have a relationship with the tenant. So, uh, we could gain access to the property and show it in advance of the tenant leaving and try to have a tenant in there for you when you know this tenant leaves and we do that for a half a month um, as an introductory to new landlords and um, if you like us to do property management we'll charge the standard rate of a month uh, commission which is standard in the industry all realtors basically charge that when they take a listing for a rental but we'll give you a free property management for the entire year for the entire first year so if you you know they're a little slow on paying for whatever reason we'll be making those calls um, you know if there's an issue they'll call us first and we'll discuss it with you we can arrange for you know repair people to come out and and whatnot we'll give you full property management for a year for free so you don't have to worry about it and and you can give that pitch and you'll see you'll get listings left and right it's it's it really works amazingly so and then what that does is it opens up doors to uh, new potential uh, sellers and you know these people all own at least the property they're living in and the property that the tenant is living in and you'll find out in conversation that they own multiple properties and it's a great way to get in the door to you know potential future sale and build your pipeline over years and and you'll never have an issue uh, you know making a living out of real estate so so um, that, that's basically the application uh, overview. Um, if you have any questions, uh, this is Ben Garcia. You can see my number on the uh, website. And um, good luck. We hope you make lots of money. Thank you.